I brought one dog here today. Oh. Yeah. Goody. You want to see him? Yeah. No. Really? Yeah. Your favorite friend is coming. <laughs> Goody. Good boy. Come here. Goody, good boy. Oh, they love. Good boy, Goody. Oh. <laughs> Everybody wants my dog. A good boy. Good dog, Goody. Good dog. Good boy. Okay. Now help me do some homework, okay? <laughs> At home, I don't have enough time for my dogs and birds anymore, so I put them around my working place. I said, now you help me to do some work. You know, and they just hang around helping, yeah. <laughs> because I have to combine now, you know? working and playing with them, you know, and sometimes flashlight, you know, I'm working and give the flashlight and then he just play with it and I'm playing with <laughs> my work because, oh, I feel sorry for them a little bit now because I don't have time for them much anymore. So we just have to combine. <laughs> 
And like today, I have not even told him yet. I just think in the head, you know, okay, I take one dog to the center today so that they have more time with me, at least in the car. And we, you know, talk uh, sweet nothing in the car. And I say, better than nothing, hey, goody. And then he, you know. <laughs> I just thought about it like that, you know, and I said, oh, which dog should I take now? And then he looked at me. He said, me, me. Yeah. <laughs> so afterward, you know, I took all my things and I said, okay, goody, now we go. And he knows. He's not going to kitchen, he's not going to the backyard for his, uh, you know, usual round of uh, outing, but he goes straight to the gate where the car is parking. Yeah, incredible. That's so good, so good. Yes. He knows it, he's very willing to go guard me, you know? Very willing, jump out of the sofa right away and just go. Normally, you have to give him a reason, otherwise he don't get up. Not two, three o'clock in the morning, who would? But he knows it when he has to go to work. They take care of me, oh, very willing, immediately. No questions like usual. It's such a good, good one. Yeah. Incredibly intelligent. Understand English like anybody. <laughs> yeah. Goody, you a good boy. He's getting old now, so I have to spend a little bit more time with them. Before it's too late, you know. You're getting old and have some, uh, you know, struggle for old dogs like that. But he's very strong for old age, you know, all of them very strong. Good boy, yeah. Okay, now we do some homework. Are you too hot, Goody? No, are you okay, baby? Yeah? Need water, nothing? No. Okay, let's uh, go back to our serious Buddha business, huh? <laughs> you happy now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, next time I just bring a dog, then I don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah, because you guys look so happy when you see him. You know? <laughs> so I think he can represent me. You know, sometimes when I'm not well, I just send a dog. Then <laughs> I have plenty that can take turns <laughs> to come here to work, and he works just for food, so no problem. When I have time at work and then they hang around, you know? Yeah, I give them some snacks and some water and they just run around. You know, I pet them a little bit and then run around. Say, we work together, you know? And they like that, yeah. <laughs> that they were working together. <laughs> yes. So I just sit on my desk and do things and they play with each other or watch TV, you know? Or laze around. Otherwise, I don't have time to run around playing with them like before. Not too much, not too much. And sometimes I have to combine, even birds also come in with dogs together, you know, and the bird like to print the one with long hair. <laughs> so, like this, the bird is chasing the dog and they're busy together. <laughs> Especially Benny, long hair and white, you know, they love to print Benny. So I just let them run chasing each other, busy, you know, while I'm doing some work. <laughs> it's also convenient, you know, they play with each other. Yeah, goody. Yeah, and sometimes I'm working with my hand and all that, so the shadow is falling and jumping on the floor, and then he's busy, so I'm working and he's working. <laughs> yeah, he loved that. Yeah, goody, today you have a job. Yeah, you see, he's very smart. He knows you are friends. Normally, if uh, I'm going out and if somebody go near me, he growl at him. <laughs> Warning. So he knows you are a good guy, so he comes to even kiss you, you know, and let you pet him, or oh, never happen like that when he go out. Nobody can go near him. No. When he goes out with me, he guard me like precious stone. Nobody can go near. Now, even if I go to restaurant, the most polite is that he keep away from people and he doesn't bother them. But if they come too near, he will warn them. Yeah. But for you, he just run around between you and let you pet him again and again and turn around like that. He's really good today. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I'm proud of the boy named Goody. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, Goody. You are a good boy, Goody. Yeah, Roti. <laughs> yeah, you are my only Roti. Yeah, I keep telling him. <laughs> he likes that. <laughs> you see, he really knows where is where, you know? Normally, he would not let anybody go near like that. But I know, I told him already, we go into the center and there are a lot of brothers and sisters, yeah? So you behave, eh? So he knows it. 
He's a good boy. <laughs> Even go kissing the boy. <laughs> yeah, he's a good boy. Because you're a monk, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. You are cute, goody. You're wonderful. Now he's tired. Okay, that's good. Lay down, sleep. So next time I just bring one dog each time, eh? Like this, we also work together, huh? He was spawning on my sofa upstairs, the big one with some the white blanket and all that. Oh, my God. And his black hair. <laughs> you can cow on it. That it become black by now, like a black carpet now. Because he shake and then it's coming out. And the black hair and the white blanket, wow, perfect. <laughs> very, very obvious. Okay, now, let's read some story here. The story is called The Immortal in Sheep. Clothing. This guy's name is Sochi. <laughs> Sochi had learned the magical arts uh, uh, from the celestial mountain, yeah, called celestial pillar. He was specially adept at shape shifting and could summon ghosts and spirits. We have some around here today. One of you. What means shape shifting? Anybody knows? Changing shapes. Yeah. Changing forms, yeah. Like human changing to an animal, animal, or changing to a tree and something like that. Camouflage, yeah? Wow, I should have learned all this before I became a master, you know? It's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> In the big, big book called The Monkey Go to the West. Yeah, Xuan Zhuang. Uh-huh. The monkey who is the disciple of Xuan Zhuang, great master, he can shape-shift himself also. Normally he could learn 120-something magical tricks, but he learned only 72. And then because he keeps showing off all the time, the master said, you cannot show off. The disciples together, they uh, provoking each other, say, oh, can you do this, can you do that? But he was the smartest one. And he learned a lot more than others, you know. The master taught him more. So he showed off once. He made himself into a tree, yeah, something like that. But he forgot to hide the tail. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so the tree with the tail wagging. <laughs> so the master caught him and then he said, OK, you violated the rules, so you cannot stay longer. But at least he has 72 tricks. With that, he has helped his master, Xuan Zhuang, to go all the way from China, capital, to India, everywhere, in order to collect the Buddha's teaching, uh, written down, you know, at that time. At that time, Buddha is not alive anymore, but his teaching has been passed down, you know, through the uh, disciples. And so they went there and copy and bring it home. So that was a monkey who also know a lot of magical power. Now this man named Sochi, mm, he also learned many stuff like that. Yes. We have one here, <laughs> one Chinese guy who can summon ghosts and, and stuff. Yeah, and spirit. He could do that. We have some ghosts around, you know, a little bit down here. <laughs> and he saw them and he said, them, you don't disturb my master ashram, eh? They said, no, no, we just pass him by, we just pass by. <laughs> <laughs> some of them scared of him. Now this man learned the art of shape-shifting and also summon ghosts and spirits. Okay. Now, there was a man, prime minister of the Han Empire at that time, uh, his name is uh, Cao Cao. He heard about Sou Chi, who had magical power, and he wanted to meet him. When Cao Chi arrived at the court of this uh, prime minister, prime minister said to him, you demonstrate to me some of your magical skills. So the magician said, my pleasure, he do that. And then after seeing some of the marvels that Cao Chi could perform, Cao Cao asked the magician if he could survive a year without food and water. So Cao Chi said, OK, you lock me in a cell and find out. Ha. 
After a year, when Cao Qi was released, the magician still looked well fed and healthy, <laughs> like the day he came in. Another time, Tao Chao threw a large banquet that was attended by many high-ranking officials and diplomats. When the food was brought to the tables, the prime minister remarked, I would love to have a such and such thing, you know. In this case, is ginger from Sichuan. So, no problem, said Chao Qi. Immediately pour some fresh Sichuan ginger from his pocket. Hmm. Another time, Tao Tao and his friends were touring the countryside. At midday, they were all hungry. So Tao Tao was about to order the servants to go in the nearest town to buy food when Cao Qi told him, let me take care. Yeah. So he took out a piece of uh, meat and a flask of wine from a basket <laughs> nearby. I mean, it wasn't there, yeah. He distributed the meat and the wine to all those present, and everyone ate to their heart's content. I mean, a lot of it. One small basket, he could take it out of it. These are magical power. Any of you interested? Yes. To take meat and wine like that? No. <laughs> Probably we can learn to make fruit and vegetable. Huh? <laughs> Not too bad, no? Especially nowadays, when the food is short, yeah, we're short of food, short of water, short of many things. And if you live in the city and in an apartment, <laughs> and you don't have any garden to plant vegetable or fruit, it's very convenient, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well. Maybe we can think about that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I think if you have garden, you should plant more fruit trees and food, make it become a habit. You know, food that is easy to plant, short-term harvest, and uh, plenty of uh, vitamin, and, you know, Nutrition already. For example, like the beans, yeah? What is it, Guri? It's okay, Guri. They're welcome. Hmm? Everybody welcome here, huh? Mm, he loves you. Want to lick you, Lu? That means love, love, oh. Yeah. Oh, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you don't want it, he'd turn away. Yeah. Whoever likes, he will kiss. Yeah. Oh, wow, you're generous today, goody, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot more customers behind there, honey. <laughs> what he wants is some shadow, see? Uh, kiss you and then you have to... So he's waiting. <laughs> waiting for some exchange shadow. Okay, so now you try to uh, plant those vegetables that bear fruits, like beans, pumpkin stuff, uh, cucumber, those things that bear fruit and simple, easy, yeah? So it become a habit. And then you eat your own produce, and it's also good for the time being because we're short of food everywhere. It's good to be independent, okay? In case something happens, you we have sufficient food for yourself, okay? Plant a lot of fruit trees wherever you can, a different season, okay? And those vegetables, that's easy to harvest and quick and not too much water. Oh, right now we still have water, but then you plant also all kinds, okay? Yeah, what's simple? Corn and all that takes too long, but beans you can eat and live well with it. It's a vegetable as well as a protein provider. You see it in one. For example, beans, any kind of beans, yes. And all kind of fruit, yeah, fruit tree that give you fruit. And if you don't eat it enough, you make it into like jam or pickle fruit. Chutney? You make chutney, okay. And you make something and put it in a jar or deep freeze, something like that, yeah. Or um, like pickle and it lasts long. Hmm? Then you can eat them when the season's out, yes.
It's better to eat your own produce. And God say in the Bible that you should sweat <laughs> yourself for your food. That's why one of the happiest marriage is for the farmers, according to research. It's serious, huh? You plant your food, okay? Plant whatever, easy, simple, but plentiful of nutrition and always easy and always can plant again and again. Of course you can plant a variety, but to be sure, concentrate on those that have protein and fiber and vegetables at the same time, like beans and fruit. Beans easy to plant. If you have a fence, you know, you just put your finger in the ground and put a bean and then it will grow in no time. And a lot of beans will come out. And you eat some and you leave some for the next uh, planting season, eh? And very cheap, easy to plant. You don't even need to take care much. I remember <laughs> I planted some beans when I was in Germany, you know. I just put it around the fence and it grows so much. Yeah, so easy, easy. It grows so fast, you know. I did not remember I have to water them. I did not. I just come out and tomatoes and all, they grow in abundance. Especially if you have trees. Of course, when you plant trees, there are also leaves falling down in the fall. And you rack them together, you put it in the hole that you dig in the ground, and there's some leaves and some earth, some leaves and some earth like that, and after a while it becomes beautiful compost. And then you just put it into your use again, planting vegetable. Or if you have to cut grasses, then you use the grass also, yeah? And your waste of uh, vegetable, the peel and the old leaves and whatever, you put them all together in there. And it becomes a very, very useful compost. Try to be independent from now on, okay? Do not complain about food shortage and food expenses. Do it yourself. Even if you have balcony, you can plant it. From now on, try to use uh, useful trees and plants together with beauty. For example, the cherry tree, they are so beautifully flowering in the season. And apple trees are so beautiful flower, you know, all kind of stuff like that. And on your balcony, instead of planting something for fun, you can plant it for eating as well. I have a little pot like this, and it's a tangerine, you know? My God, he keep growing, growing, growing. So much tangerine in such a small tree about this size. So much, so much. <laughs> Hundreds of them. And so beautiful. Just in a pot. And <laughs> nowadays, maybe you could even buy fertilizer if you don't want to make compost or if you don't have. You buy those organic fertilizer, you know. They make it very simple, easy, and doesn't smell that bad or anything. So you can even plant it on your balcony. Make it a habit, okay? Make it a habit. Don't wait. Don't wait until you don't have food. Do it now, okay? Even if the world go back to normal and have food, at least you always have your food, no harm, no? It doesn't take a few minutes to do these things. Even half an hour a day, you have plenty on your balcony. Your favorite food, simple one, not like potato and all that on a balcony, please. <laughs> <laughs> Salad or herbs, just experiment and have fun, okay? Yeah, have fun, uh, read some books how to plan or go supermarket. Every packet they tell you what year or what month of the year to plan and from when to when they will grow and harvest. So you know the timing of it. You know, if you don't want it too long, three months, you pick those with two months, two, two weeks or three weeks, yeah. It's fun to grow your own vegetable. Even grow salad on balcony is plenty for you to eat. You don't eat salad every day, so you just grow some and then it lasts you at least a week or a month. And then you plant another one. Take turn like that and you always have something to eat. So it's a better way to be independent. Or if you have a flat roof, you plant up there. <laughs> You don't plant everywhere, but you can use some plastic box or something or a ceramic box and fill with the earth, fill your compost and just keep planting plant. Very fun. You go out and see the whole roof is green and eatable. You know, beautiful. It's really beautiful. I don't have much time, otherwise I like to plant things myself. It's very, very nice. 
Now, we go back to the garden, hey? Eh? We go back to here. <laughs> Since you don't have any magical power like this guy over here, eh, you can use your hand, you know, a magic hand like every day turn the empty plot into something useful and nutritious. Even uh, if you don't have much land, you know, sometimes just a little bit, garden, you can do it and take turn, you see? and plant it and then pickle it, you know, and plant another one. If you don't eat right away, you can pickle it and save it in the cellar or something. I'll put it in the cold area, yeah. In Europe, almost everywhere is cold, so don't even need a fridge. You put it outside. I also tell many people to do that. They're planting something. And I have eaten some of their stuff for the first time. <laughs> Before we plant, but the worms eat them, you know. <laughs> And now they're doing something, the worm don't come. There are some plants you can mix together with your plant to repel those insects or something if you don't want them. Okay, where were we now? This guy, what did he do? Oh, he makes so many things already. Nowadays, we still have this kind of uh, magician, uh, you know, right? In India or in China or Taiwan, we still have some that you can manifest things. So I guess this guy didn't have to work, huh? He just uh, manifests his food every day, huh? <laughs> I wonder how he does it. Maybe he go and take it somewhere else. You know, he took it from other places. Or maybe he can manifest it from the cosmos energy. Just like the plant and grow from nothing, huh? Just put it in the earth and then it take a little bit of water, a little bit of sun, and then it become an apple. Huh? <laughs> and the same plot a few meters away or a meter away, he plant something else, he took a little water, a little soil, a little sun, and then it come out an orange. <laughs> yeah? Or anything else. This is also really a magical power of the earth. That's the offering of the nature. So if we don't make use of this magical force, it's really pity, no? Now, remember... Tao Tao and his subordinates were walking in the countryside and they were hungry, yeah. And then he just manifests everything, huh? meat and wine, all that for everybody to eat until their heart content from a small basket. We heard something like that from Jesus as well. Hmm? Except it wasn't meat, you know. It was maybe some grapes or some condiment or some relish, they call it, you know, to accompany the bread, you know at those times. Anyway, the word from there is not fish, definitely. <laughs> the word is not fish, yeah? Whatever that was, is a relish or a condiment, but it wasn't fish. <laughs> of course, there was sometimes the word written two ways, you know, you can also interpret it as fish as well. But why should Jesus want fish? Yeah, when he told all his fishermen to come follow him, to fish men instead. So it's kind of not logical. You capish? All right. After the countryside walk and the magician manifests so much food for everybody to eat, this man, the prime minister Cao Cao, begins to feel threatened. Ah, I told you, magical power is not always good for you. People feel scared of you. What if he wants to kill me, right? What if one day he manifests some poison and kill me and then take my position as prime minister? Yeah. This is the thing with this politician that time. You see, because he loved to be prime minister, he loved to be in a high position in the court. So anybody he thinks also wants the same thing. For example, the homeless dogs, eh? If he found a bone, you know, a real bone, and he was eating it, if you go near him, oh, he will growl and growl and, you know, scare you off, you see? Because he think you want the bone. Yeah. So people, when they love something so much, they think everybody else loves the same. Yeah? And they guard it very well. They really fight with their life to keep it. It's same with, uh, you know, people who have a boyfriend or girlfriend because even though his girlfriend is so ugly, you know, you couldn't understand why he wants her and what does he see in her. But 
woe to any man who go near her and talk friendly wise to her. He would think, hmm, he, he definitely wants my girlfriend. The same vice versa with the woman who has the man, you know. Sometimes her man is, my God, you, you don't even want to <laughs> see him even in the supermarket. <laughs> You know, while shopping, you don't want to even, by chance, you know, <laughs> I have to be, see him in the street. But she guards him like a treasure, you know. And if you or anybody is too friendly nearby or something, oh, then it's different. Truly, it's like that. Then sometimes you see a very beautiful blonde tall girl eh? and married, or have a boyfriend who was short and <clears throat> developed <laughs> in the stomach here, yeah and develop on an oversight as well, you know? And short and bold as well. <laughs> then they are very happy couple, you know? I saw that all the time. Whatever you like, you think everybody else likes. And that is the problem of our world. That's why we have war, we have problem with neighbors, we have jealousy, we have business trouble and all that because of all this misconception and all this illusion about what is precious. Just like, Every mother thinks that their child is the best looking and the best child in the world. And all the dogs love her think their dogs are the best, the most clever and the most, uh, you know, anything. I think my dogs are the most lovely. Yeah, <laughs> also. Yes, I love them so much, so much. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'm sitting working, you know, and they're laying there sleeping or resting, but I have to sometimes drop the pen and come hug them because they look so lovely, lovely, you know, so beautiful just laying there. They radiate kind of love, you know, attraction <laughs> from their energy. Now he's going around sharing love. <laughs> Good boy. Go around, goody, comfort all the poor people yeah, <laughs> in this room. <laughs> Steal the show, goody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. It's good, it's good. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> what an honor. <laughs> he normally don't do this. Never to do this to a stranger, no. Here he feels so relaxed, he feels good, he knows you're good. See, he knows it. Because the Rottweiler, they're not friendly, you know that. Rottweiler never friendly to outsider, no. <laughs> and when he go out with me, he's not friendly like that. Okay, now you give him some shadow, no. And he's looking like this. You put a hand and there's a shadow on the floor and he will chase it. There? On the right side, Goody. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the, the prime minister, okay? So now, after, after witnessing so many magical power from this man, Cho Chi, Cao Cao, the prime minister, began to feel worry, yeah, threatened. All kind of things going in his head about this man, you know? But it was him in the beginning who wanted to see this guy, yeah? It was him who wanted to amuse himself with all this magical power from all the guy and invited him over. But now he saw him so powerful, he began to be scared. Oh, funny, no? Yeah. So, oh, now he was thinking to himself, this guy, he has so much power. Mm. What if he decided to support the enemies, my enemies, yeah, the prime minister enemy? So he secretly plot to kill the magician. But when Tao Tao's shoulders went to Tao Chi home, the magician immediately vanished into a wall. He can shape shift himself, disintegrate the molecules of his bodies, yeah, and go through the holes of the wall. Because everything, even though it looks solid, but there are always molecules in it always some hole somewhere, you know, very small, tiny. So he disintegrate his molecules and disappear into the wall. After that, of course, he resemble himself again, eh? I don't try, eh? Okay, this is very solid. 
A very solid war. I didn't teach you this kind of thing. <laughs> the following week, Cao Cao spies reported that Cao Qi is in the marketplace. But when the soldiers arrived to get him, all the citizens there looked like Cao Qi. <laughs> <laughs> so not wanting to arrest the wrong person and anger the people, Cao Cao ordered the soldier back to their quarter. What to do? Arrest the whole market? <laughs> yeah? And then uh, evoke you know, people's anger and revolution? No, he doesn't want that. A few days later, again, the spies reported to the prime minister that they have seen Cao Qi on a hillside in the city of Yang. So, wow, Cao Cao immediately led his shoulders to kill the magician. But when they arrived on the mountain, they saw Cao Qi disappear into a flock of sheep. Yeah? <laughs> Cao Cao now knew there was nothing he could do. So he told his men, to forget about killing this man. Hearing that, one of the sheep stood up on its high legs and asked, Is this true? <laughs> <laughs> the man forgot. Yeah. So then Cao Cao immediately shouted, Shoot that sheep! Yeah. But before the shoulders could pull their bows, all the sheep were standing on their high leg and asked at the same time in unison, Is that true? <laughs> So after that, surely the prime minister gave up trying to kill Cao Qi. Uh, concerning Cao Qi, Cao Qi himself, he had his field of entertaining government officials. So he left the capital and disappeared into the mountains. Cao Qi, he was born and lived during the later part of the Han Dynasty when uh, Cao Cao was the prime minister, and he was actually the all-powerful there, you know, behind the king. He was prime minister, but he controlled all the power, yes. And later, even though Cao Cao did not take the throne from the king, but later his son, Cao Pei, deposed the king and then made himself a king. So you see, they are very ambitious family, and therefore they are so afraid of Cao Qi. But the thing is, they're so stupid, you know. Such a good man, they should have treated him nicely. Then he would never go out and support the enemies. What for? Yeah? If he's treated nicely and respectfully and care and love over there, then he would be happy there. Why should he go to the enemy, huh? And then if this man even wanted to become prime minister, then he would have been you know, doing it long ago already. Why does he have to go there and just be an ordinary citizen and entertain the prime minister instead? You see what I mean? So people are like that. People, they just think about you the way they are, yeah? Whatever in their heart uh, they think you are. If they are bad, they think you are bad. If they are negative, they think you are negative, yeah? So maybe one day our whole planet will become just positive people, and then we just have positive energy, and then our world will become better. Heaven at this. Hmm. Is that true? <laughs> Goody, what is? Baby, come here. <laughs> oh, you love everybody. <laughs> he is so good today. Can't believe it. He took you like family, you know? Because Rottweiler, they're very family-oriented. They die for their family. Yeah. All the thieves are afraid of Rottweiler, all the robbers are afraid of him, bad guy afraid of him, of, of Rottweilers, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yes, yes. Here we come. You want to hear some uh, poem of Romy? Yeah. Mm. Good, huh? All right. He's a good boy, huh? Yeah, very good boy. Very, very easy to tame. For a wild dog, left alone in a farm country field for a long time. Nobody to play with, nothing at all there. For that, he's very, very tame. I'm very, very good dog. How old are you, Harley? <laughs> eight. Eight is very old. You know, so he has our gray hair, you see? Eight is old for dog. Eight times seven, huh? Fifty-six already, Harley? My God. <laughs> but he's very, very healthy, I tell you. Oh. You know, he can jump to the light over there. You know, the high light there? Yeah. Jump over you. Because he used to be chained, you know, and the chain is very heavy. So now he's free. So for him, it's very light. He can jump very high. Same with the big dog, also chained. But this doesn't jump as high compared, you know, compared to the height. This one jumped the highest. Oh, he can jump very, very high. Yeah. Almost up to the ceiling. Not not this high ceiling, but the house, normal ceiling, you know. Because hmm. he used to be chained all day, all night, you know. So it's heavy, you know, weighing down. So now when you free him, and he jump very, very high. <laughs> the chain was big, big and heavy. Oh, terrible. I don't want to talk about it. I could cry. Here, here we go. There's a small poem from Rami, when we pray alone. Eh? It goes like this. We are brought thick desserts, and we rarely refuse them. If somebody gives you dessert, you don't refuse. Yeah. We worship devoutly when we are with others. Ours we sit. Though we get up quickly after a few minutes when we pray alone. Ha, nobody look, why have to show off, right? <laughs> we hurry down the gullet of our wantings. 
but these qualities can change. As minerals in the ground rise inside trees and becomes tree. As a plant faces an animal and enters the animal, so a human can put down the heavy body baggage and be light. So, what do we have here? He has very keen eyes, yeah? He can observe human's behavior, yeah? So he say, if somebody offers, you know, I translate a little bit, yeah? If we are offered very nice, big piece of dessert, sweet, you know, like chocolate cakes, yeah? yeah. What cake do you have today? No cake. No cake? No cake? Oh! <laughs> we want cakes for breakfast. <laughs> Because after they mention the cakes here, you know, tonight they will dream about it. <laughs> And it's better they eat before they die, huh? I don't want them to be reincarnated again just for a piece of cake. <laughs> That's a piece of cake. <laughs> All right. So Master Rumi said to us that suppose somebody offer us very big, thick, juicy, sweetened, delicious dessert, you know, a piece of cake, for example. Cream on it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Icing sugar. <laughs> And a cup of coffee or tea next to it. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum. Okay. We ever refuse? No. 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 Really? <laughs> he say we rarely refuse him. He's very <laughs> humane already. Normally, just say nobody refuses, <laughs> but he's very polite. You know, he's a poet. Uh, he's not so crude. <laughs> so now, he said, if somebody offers us this kind of dessert, we would rarely refuse, yes. And similarly, when we sit with somebody else, we could sit for hours. Like here, huh? huh? At home, difficult, huh? Yeah. That's why we have to go group meditation. Hey, before I read this poem, I already know human psychology, no? <laughs> so I said to you, at least go once a week, meditate together, no? Yes. That's why we have group meditation. Ah. Then you can sit very long, huh? Hmm? And when you come here, you can sit almost all day, huh? Except for eating and go into the bathroom or washing. You sit all day, no? Yes. Mm. See that? But at home, can you sit this much? No. 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 How come? Something happened. Something happened. <laughs> like what? Like what happened? Uh, you have to buy some food. Oh, cooking. Oh. Oh, kind of work, huh? Yeah. Even no work, just stand up and find some work, right? Yeah. You cannot sit still, right? Wow. I don't know why. You know, if we have time to sit long time, it's very lucky time. You don't even want to get up to eat. You don't even want to get up to drink. You're reluctant to go to the bathroom even in emergency case. <laughs> So I don't know why, but at home, I guess, difficult, huh? Mm. All right. So, but why the Master say here that if you sit with other people, then you can sit for hours and very devoutly. But when you sit alone, he say when you pray alone, you get up quickly and running down to our highway of desire. Uh -huh. The gullet of our wantings is the same, like a highway of desire. I mean, oh, all kind of things we want to do, yeah? At home, we sit a few minutes and then get up quick and go find something to do. Oh, thank you. New design. The most comfortable is when you sit at home alone, you know, in your cave or in your little room, and you wear your old clothes and you have no shoes, Your hair down, you do what you want. That'd be the best. Mm. Feel the best. Yeah. 
Okay, but it's also fun. It's okay now and again. So, why is that? That when we are alone, we cannot sit long. Because I work very well. Because if I sit alone, I was saying, oh, maybe it's time to better to take care of anything else or somebody call out. Right. But if, if the group meditation like this is meditation time, so we well well will show us. So it's time to meditate. Just sit and meditate. Right, right, right. Anybody else know why? There's a group effect message. Also, yes, correct and correct. The mind is hungry. The mind is hungry? If you're busy. So you mean, if you sit alone, the mind is hungry, okay. Then why when you sit with others, the mind is not hungry? More concentrate. More concentrate, more powerful. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to come here, relax, you know, put out everything. It's uh, like your home, hmm? the best home where you can come here. And you don't need to listen to the phone. You don't need to hear your wife yelling or your husband screaming <laughs> or your kids wanting this and that from you. Which, you understand? Wonderful. More blessing. More blessing? From where? From the book meditation from Master. Okay, so... You say group meditation is better because more power? Yes. yes. Who agreed with that? Hmm, okay. Why more power? Many must have come, right? How many? <laughs> because everyone has a good master taken. Oh, really? So there's a group of people, there's many masters. Many must have come. <laughs> So we have lots of master here today, huh? <laughs> then I, I have no need to sit here, no. That's different. Different. How? I mean, the master said that uh, group meditation is just like a pole. It's collective, like a pole. Everybody can. Ah, okay, collective, but not swimming in it. <laughs> well, you understand something? That's not bad. Yeah. The way master room is saying here, it seems like he means. If we are with other people, we like to show off, you know? Yeah. We look very devout and sincere. <laughs> Dear God, I'm very sincere. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to bless me. Are you? <laughs> so, it has a little bit of, you know, funny tone in there. It means for other people. I, I, he probably doesn't mean you. I know you're very good. You sit long hours at home even, right? <laughs> you do? Yes. Yes? Wow, I'm proud of you. Since when? I got initiated. How long ago? It's at least three weeks ago. Wow. <laughs> Only three weeks and you can sit long? Yeah. Wow, I'm really proud of you. You really make me proud. Wow, that to see you here, I'm really very, very surprised and very happy. <laughs> I never thought you would come because the situation you live in, you know, and uh, those influences that you had. It's not like you didn't want to, but it's very difficult to get out of influence, you know? Yeah, yeah very difficult. You think it's easy? It's not. Even if you just have a boyfriend or girlfriend, huh? And sometimes your boyfriend and girlfriend doesn't want you to eat vegetarian. Oh, it's already hell. Eh? Every day you eat, you feel guilty, like you're doing something wrong. But this is the problem with people around us who really want to control us. And it clings to our brain here, you know? Thank God, every day, every day, really. Because it's rare. It's rare that you have such a luck and such a good opportunity that you come together as a family and then everybody practice the same method, you know? Has the same idea and go same direction, supporting each other's good endeavor. You understand me? Yeah. Mm. Very rare. So, how many are lucky like that? Raise hand for me. You are a monk, you don't have to raise hand. <laughs> I know you're lucky already. <laughs> you have only Buddha as your family. 
and the Buddha always say, okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. So I'm really proud of you. But you did take some struggle, huh? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I can see it on your face. But you're home now. Welcome home, my baby. <laughs> Love you so much. <laughs> yeah. And the next week's more. After you left, there will be more. So I'm sure if you stay, just, you know, hang on the curtain or something. <laughs> Decoration. <laughs> we, we put some bell or something uh, all over him. <laughs> or put, uh, put him in a white cloth, put outside you know, with a carrot nose. <laughs> Snowman. <laughs> Have job to do, can stay. <laughs> or we put a red hat, you know, and red clothes and beer. Uh, Father Christmas, <laughs> it does look like one. <laughs> Father Christmas, you know, eat a lot of cookies, so he's always kind of chubby, you know. Yes. He's uh, very suitable. <laughs> okay. Chubby men are very nice men, right? Chinese, they love it, you know. If you have no girlfriend, it's easy to find a Chinese girlfriend because I love chubby people. <laughs> they say chubby people are uh, married, you know, good, uh, loyal, and faithful. Easy going also, very sweet. <laughs> sweet temper, yeah. Okay, where were we again? <laughs> huh? It was true about the difference between group and singer. Uh... Yeah, yeah. When we sit together with everybody else, like here, you can sit long hours, yeah? Sometimes I come in and I saw you meditate very well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of you. I mean, at least you try. Huh? When I practice with the Zen master, you know, they have a big stick like this, long from here to there. You can... <laughs> yeah? Yeah, true, I'm not kidding. You know, when I was younger, I went all over the place and practiced, trying all kinds of methods until I got the Kuan Yin method. Huh? And then... Uh, Truly, you know, they wake you up, huh? They tap you on your shoulder, pop. Yeah. And even the neighbor also wake up all together. <laughs> so, so just one pop, the master wake the whole school up. It's like a wooden stick, you know, but flat, about this size, and long. And when it pop, it makes noise. I don't know if it's painful or not, but it makes noise. And it scares the... <laughs> Get the life out of you. <laughs> a lot of people f attend Satori that way. Satori is a Japanese word for Samari, yeah? okay? You see all the statues of Buddha? Their eyes are a little bit open. Because when you meditate well, your eyes just open a little bit, like when you die, you know? The white part just shown because everything go up, you know, the eyes go up and the jolly white part show like that. So, of course, when somebody make a statue of the Buddha or paint the painting of the Buddha or the Bodhisattva a long time ago, of course they can only paint it when the Buddha in Samadhi, you know? Otherwise, the Buddha will not sit in there for them to, <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to photograph. Therefore, their eyes are like that. You see what I mean? Sometimes when you sit in deep meditation, your eyes also show a little white part like that. Later, people think that when you sit in meditation, you have to open your eyes like that. That's a misunderstanding. When you've gone into samadhi, you can't even remember to open your eyes. Sometimes when you go into samadhi, your body tilts a little bit also, you know, or maybe like this, or maybe like this. When you are in samadhi, your body also sometimes uh, very lifeless, yeah? It could be a little bit like this, yeah? And your eyes also may be closed or open, it doesn't matter anymore. You're gone, yeah. completely. So we just uh, concentrate on what we can do, yeah? uh, uh, what correct, and we don't concentrate on the incorrect. <laughs> now we go back to the poem of uh, Rumi, okay. Okay, after a few minutes, he said, if we sit alone, he said, pray, but you must know, when the master say pray in here, it's meditation, huh? Otherwise, why would he mention up there, he said, hours we sit together with others. That means sit in meditation, huh? Yes. At that time, maybe they don't say meditation, huh? They say praying, huh? 
Yeah. Sometimes we also say, oh, we sit and pray. That's also a prayer, of course. Yeah? When you sit devoutly and think of God, yeah? or deep in communion with God, that is also a prayer. It's even a more correct prayer. So he say, if we pray alone, we cannot sit too long. He say, a few minutes, we hurry, get out, <laughs> try to find something to do to fulfill our desire. But... He said, these qualities can change. Oh, thank God. Thank you so much, Master Rumi. <laughs> I thought we don't have any chance, you know, but we have. He said, but this quality can change. Isn't that wonderful? Hmm? He said, just like the minerals in the ground rise inside trees and become tree. You see, the tree only took on a mineral, nutrition from the ground, they become tree. They transform into tree. Yeah. And then as a plant faces an animal and enters the animal. Ah, like the cow. Hmm? Yeah. He eats the grass mm-hmm. or some weeds. And it, it transforms. The plants transform into animals. You see? The cycle of evolution. Mm. And then he says, so human can also put down the heavy body, baggage, and be light. There's hope. Huh? They give us an hour. They say the way out. Huh? Uh, we can change. can change. By put down the heavy body, baggage, and be light. What mean light? Mean lightweight? Spiritual light. Spiritual light? Possible also. Yes, yes. What he mean? <laughs> he probably played with word here, or maybe it's a translation in English, you know? They say the heavy bag is put out, then you become light. I mean, no more burden, eh? But this also mean the light inside of us. It's possible. Either way, it's the same, right? Either you put out the uh, material baggage and become light, no more burden, or you enter the light, or you become the light. It's also correct. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so now we know as group meditation is really good, huh? Yes. That's why I told you we must do group meditation. And then, at least, even though in the beginning we sit there only because everybody else sits like the way he said in here, yes. But later on, that's how we train ourselves to get this kind of habit, huh? And then we keep sitting longer, even at home later. Yeah, as somebody who is good, like your brother here, <laughs> you can sit long already alone <laughs> after initiation. Yeah, but sometime after initiation, you get into the habit quicker. Huh? If you really, really desire to be one with God, just sit right away. And especially after initiation, you tell your new brother and sister, that's the time we should continue with the practice because it's all the blessing just flushed into you, you know. And so you grab it and you keep holding on to it and get more and more and more. Don't wait until your bank is empty <laughs> and then try to fill in a little bit at a time. Yes. You see, when your water tank, yeah, it's been filled, full already, yeah, and you use up a little bit every day, but then you fill it up immediately, then it's always full. But if you, okay, my tank is full, yeah, I wait until, you know, later, later, later. And when the tank is empty and then we fill in a little bit, a little bit, sometimes it doesn't trickle down into the house to use, yeah? Because it doesn't rise up enough to go out into the, the pipe. Capish, yeah? Yes. Okay. All right, any question? Hmm? No? Oh, enlightened, eh? Wonderful. Wow. Are you happy, by the way? Yes. yes. Truly? Yes. yes. Even no cakes, okay? Just <laughs> <laughs> to be here with you, Master. Thank you. Yeah. I see. To see you in the Oh, oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> I like you happy, you know? I like you have good food and all that. The thing is, uh, maybe if you meditate a lot, then you don't need food. But sometimes, if you're at home, it's more difficult. You know why? Because you're working a lot and you stress out. And sometimes you need a little comfort. Not even hungry. Yeah? Sometimes not even hungry. Just a break. Yes. Just a break. Just like a comfort zone, you know? That's true. true yeah. Like sometimes work for long hours, you know, in the office or somewhere. Huh? 
and then you couldn't do it no more. Yeah, and you couldn't sit anymore because you've been sitting in the computer so long already. Your legs and everything already almost gone to sleep. And if you go sit meditation again, oh, I think you explode. <laughs> so you need to go in the kitchen, huh? Yeah, fight a little bit to munch around and you feel a little better. It's not because food or not because of energy or not because of greed or anything, just like a break, huh? Somehow, huh? Maybe in this physical world we need that. But uh, if we don't have food, we just go without, huh? In case something happens and you don't have food, you just sit and meditate, huh? Either way, it's no problem. After meditating for a while, truly, if you are deep in samadhi, eh, you don't feel hungry and your body will get used to it. You just tell the body, okay, time for vacation. <laughs> vacation from kitchen, vacation from food, vacation from supermarket, vacation from everything. There's nothing for you today or maybe tomorrow and the day after and after until further notice. <laughs> we take a vacation. <laughs> yeah. Actually, if you tell your body like that, hey, listen, okay? Don't worry about it. Hmm? Okay, no question really, huh? No? Wow, wonderful. What enlightened people. Sometimes when I'm very hungry, I said, my body, mm. the body doesn't need food alone mm. or bread alone to survive. Mm. And I just repeat that mantra for three or four times and I, mm. I'm okay. Yeah? The body listen, right? Yes, Master. <laughs> Poor body, no? <laughs> Why you feel hungry and you don't give body food? Sometimes uh -huh. I don't eat too much, Master, because I am the only one vegetarian at home. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't go shopping and buy my food. Uh -huh. I just depend on the food that from the center. I buy something from the center and then okay. I just cook it for myself. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. When we cook for ourselves, we don't feel like cooking that much, yeah. It's also good for you. <laughs> you know, sometimes I tell you, if the food is good, then fine, we enjoy it, it's good taste, eh? And if the food is not good, then it's good, we slim down. <laughs> I don't eat too much, uh, so either way it's good, good, yeah. Like my Nobel Peace Prize soup at home was wonderful. Oh, you don't know about that, huh? The Supreme Master Television. Sometimes we talk together with the staff, and one of them asked me why I didn't get any Nobel Peace Prize yet. I said, I got plenty at home. <laughs> <laughs> because every day one of my assistants, the same guy, you know, and he cooks the same thing every day. We have a brown rice and sesame as a basic, you know, and sometimes we eat together with other fresh vegetables or not, depend. And maybe adding tofu or something. So I think it's too dry, so we cook a soup with it. And every day he cooks the same soup with those uh, vegan sauces. Every day, same taste, and the color looks the same purple. <laughs> no matter what kind of vegetable he throw in it, it tastes always the same, color the same. So every time I open, oh, I, <laughs> I, I go eat like instant noodle <laughs> instead. <laughs> so I name it Nobel Peace Prize Soup. Yeah, because. If after you eat that soup and you still feel peaceful and can treat everybody else nicely and still go out and help others, then you, <laughs> you're worthy of getting Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> Just a joke, you know. Yeah. In that case, all of my staff at home, we all have Nobel Peace Prize because that's what they eat every day. Simple, you know, simple. But I could also put everything in one soup. We call it assorted soup. And it still tastes good. But this guy, no matter what he throw in there, tastes always the same. <laughs> tastes always and look the same. That is a miracle about it. <laughs> the main ingredients of his, his soup. You know, you have those uh, vegan sauces. There are two kinds. Huh? One is brown, one is white. Some day he throw the white in, some day he throw the brown in. And, and no matter what color, and sometimes even some tofu in it. Some of the day, <laughs> and still the color looked the same. I don't know how he did that. It really, it really is a miracle. That's man. No, I'm not joking. You know, you can ask my assistant there. They all know about Nobel Prize with soup. <laughs> I have never eaten such a soup in my life. To be positive, I name it Nobel Peace Prize soup. <laughs> Because we have to be positive, you know. I mean, Supreme Master TV tells us we've got to be positive. <laughs> a master told us to be positive. i got to be positive. So, 
Nobel Peace Prize soup. If you happen to go to my house, I prove it to you. <laughs> you can eat one day, two day, three day, but afterward, when you're hungry, you can eat, you know? Because we work very hard. We have dogs, you know, work a lot. Dogs have to go out four, five, six times a day, it depends. If we sometimes have to work late, then they hang around and they go out once more again, you know? Because I don't have much time with them, so whenever I have time or whenever I'm still there, you know, together all the time. So they go out walking, take nine, ten dogs, it's not like one, huh? And they have to wipe them, you know? Wipe the whole body with vinegar solution and then wipe again with the water tower, né? Yeah, dump tower, and then dry again. Mm. Otherwise, it's too wet. <laughs> I got wet on my sofa, no? <laughs> so it's a work, huh? Before he came here, we also cleaned him. That's why they smell nice, you know? They don't smell bad at all. If you keep your dog like this every day, you don't even need to bath them. Go and go out in the rain, they get wet. That's how they bath in nature. Mm. Dogs don't even need to shampoo, chemical stuff, no. Yeah, and they're very healthy. <laughs> he loves that. Whenever he see a human, he just... <laughs> and he just... Oh, he's thumped him like that. And then, and then he lay there forever. If you pet him like this, he never move from you. Never. See how quiet? Quiet, eh? Huh? <laughs> you just stay there, enjoy. <laughs> yeah. He's a very good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. Very good boy. He's so good, so good. Understand English, my God. Yeah. Not like he has been raised in English-speaking country, no. He's been all alone in the farm yard, you know, cement yard, and big and empty. Nobody there, talk to him, nothing. But he's so friendly after we took him home. He's so friendly. He's so grateful, you know. He's one of the many grateful dogs. You know, when you adopt a dog, he's always grateful. He does anything for you. Yes. Whenever he doesn't understand what I'm saying, he keeps looking in my eyes for a while, and then he understands it. Yeah. Good boy, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he heard me, that's why. Okay. Truly, no more question. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If I don't see you again, <laughs> you have a good trip home, huh? Eh? Thank you. I'm also sorry. I don't ever want you to leave. You know, right? Yes. Yeah. Once the world will become vegetarian and save themselves, yeah? Two, they don't turn to compassionate way, don't turn away from disaster, then they will beget disaster. Maybe we can survive, maybe not. So as I told you already, be prepared, okay, for both ways, yeah? If the world turn around, it's good. Because there are two ways to go, you know? One way is to go down and meeting disaster. One way is to go up, away from it. So. The vegetarian diet or vegan diet is just to turn away from disasters away. You see, that leading to disaster. So I keep telling people, but if they don't listen, we cannot force them. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production, Q fever, norovirus, swine flu, Ebola restin virus, Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic-resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus. Blue tongue disease, E. coli, salmonella. Bird flu, mad cow disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. 
Pig's disease or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock, some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility, eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease, over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least 1 trillion US dollars a year. Cancer, colon rectal cancer, over 1 million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental uses up to 70% of clean water, pollutes most of the water bodies, deforests the lungs of the earth, uses up to 43% of the world's cereal, uses up to 85% of the world's soy, causes world hunger and wars, 80% cause of global warming, plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. Cowpox from milking cows. Bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Hysteria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis, classified as a major allergen, lactose intolerance, plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. I told you the beginning of this year, right? We have like four years or something, yeah? Four or five years, yeah? But it could be a little longer, it could be even shorter. It depends on how people react, okay? As you saw, so shall you reap, you know? And uh, our group may be able to help everybody, but maybe not. We can help them maybe in a soul way, but not physical way all the time. And if the people choose to continue their destructive path, then they will beget destruction, okay? And I just hope that it changed, okay? Yes. But either way, be prepared, okay? There are two kind of situations might happen, yeah? People change, okay, everybody's fine. People don't change, then it's not fine, yeah? If they keep going north, then they will arrive at north area. If they're going south, turn around and they go to south. That's very simple and logical, okay? Destruction begets destruction. When it's too much negative energy, no one can help. Okay? And maybe you'll be spared, you know? Just like last time in uh, some disaster in China, yeah? But all the disciples are okay in the same area. Yeah, earthquake. And then they even go out helping everybody else. But if most of the world kaput, also difficult for us to leave, you know? All the shock and all the destruction like that. Also, maybe too much poison in the air, you know, gas and all that. So, okay, meanwhile, you plant vegetable. okay? I told you already, plant the simple one, less water, and plant the organic way, yeah? Very simple, you know? Uh, look on the Supreme Master television, see how simple to plant vegetable. If you have it, you can plant on balcony, whatever you can. If not, you go plant with the neighbors. Your sister and brother or the neighbor, you say, oh, you have a piece of land you don't cultivate. You want me to go and plant vegetable? We have half, you know, <laughs> like that. Okay. Plant the thing that is simple to grow and quick, and you can save it and not too much water, okay? 
Yeah. And in a couple more years, if the war still continue, then we are free. Uh, we don't have to work much anymore. Yeah? If the war is not there, it's even less to work. Okay? <laughs> yeah. And now, I just hope people join in vegetarian quick to earn enough merit, you know? For the positive energy to overwhelm the negative. That is spiritually speaking. <laughs> Physically speaking, if more vegetarian, then less uh, forest destruction, less uh, methane, less, uh, you know, spending on sickness and all that, less everything. And then we'll be saved in any case. Yes. If everybody became vegetarian already, then we don't have to work anymore. They will grow themselves, you know, they'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Now couple more years, if they are all good, vegetarian, the world will be saved. I mean, it's not immediately the whole planet recover, but you will see the effect right away, yeah, the positive impact. And then maybe we'll find a place or something, plant vegetable, eat together, live simple, yeah. The one who can come, the one who wants to come. And if the world is not there, okay, then we cultivate it somewhere else, you know, plant vegetable up, <laughs> up there. <laughs> Just joking. When we were there, we were free of trouble. No need vegetable. Yeah? No need fruity duties. <laughs> Nada. Yes, yeah, we will be free from everything. No pain, no sorrow. Yeah? Then we also be happy together. Whatever happened is okay. Yeah? Whatever happened is good. It has to happen. All right? Yes. But continue working, huh? Yes. Uh, you save one person, is one person saved. You don't have to start a vegetarian restaurant if you don't have money. You just uh, do the, you know, lunch box yes. at home. Everybody just uh, cook together. And if you have an office and ask them, we sell very cheap. You know, like the Chinese, they do it. They sell very cheap because they don't need restaurant. They don't need to pay for the place and no couverture, nothing. Yes. Just a simple uh, vegetable and, you know, and protein. They have to cook really good, very good to make people enjoy and cheap so that they can afford it. Just almost like they cook it themselves, you see? Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, saves 70% of the total cost of 40 trillion US dollars for reducing global warming, uses 4.5 times less land to grow food, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing, a solution for world hunger, Free up 3.4 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year. Half the world's grain supply. Consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production. Reduces pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintains cleaner air. Saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year. Stop 80% of global warming. Plus more. So it's just a little bit money in case your pot is broken and you renew it, that's it. And you do it at home, you know, all the sister or brother put money together and cook together in one house, you know, a bigger house, whatever house that's big enough to cook. And then if you work in a company, you bring it to your company and that's what they do. And he works in another company, he ordered 30 to bring there. People will order and then Slowly, from words of mouth, yeah? <laughs> and then there will be more and more. That's how they do it. Yeah. There was some sister in China and Taiwan, they do it now. Because they don't have enough money to buy a restaurant. And maybe they're also working already, you know, they can't afford to just uh, quit and go work in the restaurant. It's a big responsibility. So, so whoever can open Loving Hood, open it. Whoever cannot, just do the lunchbox. Yeah? And they even earn money, even though they sell so cheap. 
So everybody likes it because it's cheap, you know, and convenient. They don't have to cook, and even almost cheaper than what they do because you buy big, you know, and it's cheaper than when they buy at home. And they don't need to cook anything, and it tastes good. So they sell a lot, and not just one place, and now it's spread all over, you know. All the sister and brother do their system. It's very nice also. Convenient for people, good for you. And simple, no capital needed. Yeah. And those sisters, they work, but they don't take money for it, you know? They have their job already, so they just cook when they have every time, you know? Yes. Or evening and then morning they bring it. Therefore, they, they have the money, you see? They pull money together, and from that money they do other things. Print the flyers or organize exhibition, whatever they do with it. Okay? okay. Thank you, Master. Love you. And bless you so much. Thank you for being a good boy, good girl. Thanks for being good kid. You help me a lot by being good. You help me a lot by spreading the news. I thank you really so much. You are saving the world, okay? You are heroes. I should uh, have a hero award for each of you, but too many candy. <laughs> And next time, and love, and love, 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 okay? A lot of love. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all you do, okay? Thank you so much. Okay, you go with God. All right? We see each other again, no worries. Yeah. Yeah. We're always together, you know? Yes. Now I'm two inches taller. <laughs> you water don't, don't reach my dress. Whoever designed this, you know, they really need to know who is right. Yeah, I like think this. it's very easy to wear. And the water, you know, don't touch you. Okay, I love you so much. See you, okay? Thanks for coming and thanks for what you do. Help, okay, continue. Thank you. Love you, trust.